What's going on everybody? We're gonna do something a little different today. Instead of fixing a bike or talking about how to fix a bike, I'm gonna talk about why this bike sucks. So, let's get into it. All right, I know with my previous statement, I said this bike sucks, but it's still a nice bike. It's a very nice bike. It, you fix all the problems. It's a very nice bike. Even with some of the problems not resolved, it's still a very nice bike. It just might not run as good. And other than that, it's still kind of a piece of shit. But I like the bike. And all these problems have made it the one of a kind rare bike it is today. And people have come up with fixes for all these stupid ass problems. But back then, nobody really knew how to fix any of these problems or really why it happened. So it was just considered a horrible bike back then. This story takes place 40 years ago in a very far galaxy away. Anyways, 40 years ago, the 1983 480. That was a very nice bike, performed really well. And then they decided, 1984, we're going to make a CR500. The main and biggest problem with this bike was it's a one-year engine, so it's impossible to find goddamn parts for it. And the engine just sucks donkey dick. I'm just experiencing some PTSD from restoring my CR500 and fixing all these problems. The engineers just decided to shove right up my ass. The real biggest problem with this bike was it just fried pistons all the time, nonstop. Just going through top ends, scoring out the cylinders. And the reason was it would ping like crazy. And pinging just means pre-detonation, which in simple words just means the fuel in the air in the cylinder ignites before the spark plug does. So it's detonating, it's detonating without the spark plug even firing, which if you don't know that, that's not very good. So the detonation being one of the biggest issues with this bike and the stock jetting also played a role in this, but I'll get to that in a minute. But the jetting just, it ran the bike way too rich, and if you jetted it to run correctly, it would make the detonation problems worse. And disclaimer, you cannot jet away pre-detonation. So one of the biggest design flaws in this engine was that they made an inefficient cylinder size. And circling back to the CR480, they basically just took the head off the CR480 and just plopped it right on the CR500. So they used the same size dome as the CR480, while the piston on the CR500 was a bigger diameter. So it would not match the dome area, and this combined with the wrong jetting and the carburetor made for a very confused engine. So the gas flow control and the combustion are pretty haphazard in such a large cylinder, making this bike run like an illiterate pile of monkey shit. So the quick fix for this problem back in 84 was to just add two head gaskets and a different needle. And while people claimed they found the right needle that helped fix the problem, it really didn't in the long run because no matter what you did to the carburetor, it wouldn't fix the pinging issue because the head just didn't work with the bike. So adding two head gaskets, it might have helped a little bit, but it didn't help too much. Like it reduced the compression and that would help reduce the pinging but you're increasing the squish clearance so this wasn't a good fix or a long lasting fix by any means. As the years moved by, people started to come up with better and newer solutions for these problems such as the twin spark plug conversion. What a beautiful solution. Just slap another spark plug in there so it just detonates where it's probably detonating where it's not, you know. That'll fix it. <laughs> people would just drill another hole at like a 45 degree angle from left to right of the bore and slap another spark plug in there and they would use like Yamaha snowmobile uh, coils because it's got one coil with two leads so it's already set up to work with the CDI system and I didn't really find much on how well this worked but I don't think it worked that well because nobody uses it anymore so I would not recommend that. Or, hear me out, you can just machine the head down. And people would machine the squish band down. And the squish band is basically just the outer area of the combustion chamber where the piston and the cylinder meet to squish the air into the combustion chamber so it all ignites and is compressed into one little area and it's not um, detonating in random spots when it's not supposed to be. 
and this was the main cause of pre-detonation in this bike and why the carb was so untunable but basically you just machine the squish band to lower the MSV which basically just stands for maximum squish velocity and in doing this it will condense the combustion into the combustion chamber making it um, detonate in the chamber and not in random spots uh, and there's somebody that does this really well there's a few people but someone who's made his name what's his name I forgot his name um uno momento por favor five hours later Harry Klim that's the guy Harry Klim I'll talk about him more in a second because he he does this really well and he fixed a lot of bikes and he has his own little shop I'll put the link to his website in the description if you by any chance have this giant turtle bike and I would recommend doing the um, getting the, the head machined by Harry Klim and I'm really sorry if I butchered your name just get an easier last name to read but I think I did it right maybe hopefully Klim Klim Clam Klim Clur Klim and Hemene Harry Klim. Another thing that they did in this bike that I'm not really sure why is they added um, a short rod. So the rod being shorter would affect the compression height and the piston speed at different portions of the stroke. And they did add a long rod in the 87 to 01 models, but if you wanted to add a longer rod in the 84 to 86, you would need a five millimeter spacer in order for it to work. I'm not sure why they decided to change it two years later but at least they put a longer rod of inch. Another pretty obvious problem this bike had was it would run really hot and you know the main thing with that was it's an air-cooled engine and this is the only year they made the air cooled next year they made it liquid cooled so it kind of adds the rarity that's a air-cooled engine but it also makes it run really hot with it being air cooled you had to run a really really rich oil to gas uh, mixture ratio and you also kind of had to run the carb a little rich too and um, all that doesn't really make it run well if you make it run really rich it's just gonna foul out spark plugs and if you try to get it right it would just run too hot and blow up so there's a lot of misconception that built up around the 84 CR500 carburetor the stock carb was a PE45D, but everybody would blame this carburetor and say it just sucked and it didn't fit well with the bike. And there is some truth to that, being that it wasn't um, it wasn't jetted right from the factory. So there was a little bit of truth, and it was just built up that this carb just sucked and everybody hated it. And well, the truth was, it really wasn't a bad carburetor, and that was really never the problem. Uh, as we know now, the problem was all in the head. But the stock jetting was spot on with the 162 main you needed to change the stock um, 68 pilot to a 65 but that was really all you needed to change the stock needle uh, an r 1468n and the third clip position with the air screw at one and a half turns out would be golden there are th um, three different throttle slides as well there's a three a 3.5 and a four you wanted to make sure you had the 3.5 all right, let's talk about Harry Klim for a minute. So there's an old article that talked about um, the pinging problem and this guy named Harry Klim, who found a way to redesign the head and I quote, remove the detonation, but make it easier to start and tone down the violent power delivery by simply modifying the stock head. Well, doesn't that just sound magical and dandy? Basically, what he would do is reshape and machine the existing dome in the head, and the squish area was altered uh, as was the compression. For flawless performance, it is recommended to use race fuel like VPC12, Suncoast Supreme, or Renegade Pro 112 and up. The engine really likes full synthetic two-stroke oil like Formula K2, um, and for riders who are really on the pipe and really riding hard uh it's considered caster 972 i don't know why i took like six takes trying to say this one word and it wouldn't work but caster 972 is the ticket to success since these vintage bikes run really hot the golden ticket for the stock pe carb is to swap the 68 pilot to a 65 
uh, and the best alternative uh, is the Air Striker carb, which with the JD jetting kit uh, ran just as good, but maybe a little better. The stock carb shines in low to mid power, while the Air Striker shines in mid to high power. The last few things wrong with this bike was the rear shock was undersprung, and the back brakes were, well, they were just terrible. The front was a disc brake, so that one was perfectly fine, but the rear brake was a drum brake, and they would always break and give out fairly quick. Uh, I don't know why they decided to make the front a uh, disc and the rear a uh, drum. Probably some knowledge I don't really know. Um, it just doesn't make sense why they would not make the back a disc too. But if you know, please let me know in the description. Uh, that would really help me out. So you might be wondering, well, why would I buy this bike if it sucks? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. It's your money. You do what you want. But all jokes aside, it is actually a really good bike. And you really don't need to do a whole lot despite all these problems. If you send your head out to Harry Klim and get it uh, redone, it'll run perfectly fine. You just got to make sure you run the right gas, to, uh, oil to gas mixture, and you got to reach out the carb a little bit. Or you can just put a whole new carb in altogether. All that works perfectly fine. Those are the main issues with this bike, and that's really all you need to do. So I love Harry Klim and his work with the head mod, but uh, if you get the head mod and the gas right, change the pilot and the stock carb, and it will run beautifully. Uh, a link to Harry Klim's site will be in the description if you want to check it, check out his work. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to my friend CJ. Who He's very knowledgeable in the old vintage bikes and gave me the um, gave me that old article that talked about Harry Clem and the CR's detonation issue. Um, so huge thank you to CJ for all your help. Um, I really appreciate it and thank y'all for watching.